Sound 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 From Tonga to Japan to America, you are now entering Tamas Island with your host, the baby face heel, Tama Tonga. And folks, it is that time again. It's Tuesday. It's November 16th. We are live on Twitch. We are live on Tamas Island for another jam-packed episode of of wrestling and world talk uh because folks it's been a hell of a weekend we will get into it in a second but let me introduce you to the folks that we have joining us on the podcast this week as always i'm the culture vulture the folk city hustler the disruptor whatever you want to call me i'm ross w berman i the fourth i'm your certified lover boy and we've got <sighs> joining Ooh, us it gets longer and longer every week I man keep, i keep adding stuff baby <laughs> you just keep adding shit i keep adding me. stuff i'm whatever i'm whatever the listeners need me to a certified be certified lover boy i haven't heard before and i like that one i'm, <laughs> I'm bite- the hell certified you i'm biting uh drake drake gave me drake right, gave me my blue diploma mark before you start claiming that shit man I- <laughs> fair fair well joining me joining me as always we've got we've got karen karen how are you doing this lovely weekend well i I just had one heck of a laugh, so I am doing fantastic. <laughs> Glad to be back. Awesome. And John, John is back on the podcast with us. How are you, John? Man, I'm just bummed I'm uncertified. <laughs> it's just got all you gotta do is listen to CLB, the new Drake album, and that's 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 the that's the course. That's the crash right. course and in, in certified lover boys. But uh it would be remiss if I didn't introduce the fourth man joining us today. <laughs> he is very busy with World Tag League right hey. now. He is currently in uh, uh what did we decide he was in Toyama. Toyama. Folks, please welcome Tama Tonga. Tama, how are you feeling? What's up, guys? Hey, I'm I'm the bad boy, I'm the good bad guy, the certified good bad guy yep. with a blue check all right welcome hey thank you for having me uh back on the podcast it's been a hell of a a, a week here in japan I'm glad to join you guys and let's get this thing popping Ross. We're, we're thrilled to have you because we got a bunch to talk about uh this this weekend shout or shout out to everyone that's in the chat over on twitch.tv slash thomas island shout out to all the subscribers over at patreon.com backslash thomas island and shout out to you the folks that are listening right now to this let's get into it earlier this year Jay White and Kenny Omega had a tense stare down on Impact. It was seen as like the big opening to the Forbidden Door. Kenny Omega was AEW champion. He was also Impact champion. Jay White was never open weight champion. By the end of November 13th, 2021, both men had lost those titles and they lost those titles in the same night. AEW full gear, Kenny Omega was defeated by Hangman Page in the main event. Hangman Page, now the AEW champion. And then in the main event of New Japan Battle in the Valley, Tomohiro Ishii broke the never open weight records, becoming a record breaking six time never open weight champion, defeating Jay White in a hell of a match. I mean, this is, we, re- we got a lot to talk about. So I really, I want to talk first and foremost about Jay White because he's had a rough year, man. His year started with a a 50 minute loss to Kota Ibushi in the Tokyo Dome. He kind of he 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 ebbed the flow a little bit by by winning the never open weight championship from uh from from I believe you won it from Hiroshi Tanahashi earlier in the year. But then it's he's he he wasn't in the G1. He's been uh, he's been on Impact from time to time. He's been on New Japan Strong from time to time, and now Tomohiro Ishii. Oh boy, got a little echo there, but yeah, it's all good. <laughs> but he uh, he he lost the never open weight title to Ishii, and it does it does beg that question of what what is what's going on with Jay White? What is happening with Jay White? I'm gonna throw it to Karen first because I know she was she was up watching battle in the valley. What did you think of the main event, and and what did you think of the the title switch? Well, I enjoyed the Japanese commentary, and I actually watched it the day after because it started at 11 p.m. East Coast time, and I'm, you know, I like to go to bed at, like, a solid 10 o'clock, especially (laughs) waking up early. But uh, on Japanese commentary, when the match concluded, Tomohiro Ishii, the Stone Pitbull, has a brand new title and a brand new nickname. 
His new nickname is The J Killer. Wow. Ooh. The Japanese commentary pulled no punches on this match, but he was like, Ooh. he is the J White Killer, Tomohiro Ishii. Oof. No. Painful. It was cold blooded. It was it was it was ice cold. <laughs> so, Def but the match was outstanding. Hard hitting Abs as expected. Any match with Ishii, it's yep. just whoo. But uh, it's it's it it frees him up to do other things. Yes, yes, it does. No, and it 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 frees up Jay White to do to do other things. It does, and I think it also does. It adds a little bit of that never open weight legacy back to the title. Like like we've said on the podcast many times, as the uh, IC title went away and the world title was kind of brought out, the never belt was kind of elevated into that intercontinental championship position, and that made a lot of people who are fans of the never open weight style. Uh, afraid that they aren't going to get those, you know, for lack of a better term, those pit bull matches. We've called it so the, the pit bull division. But now Tomohiro Ishii, once again, the never champion. So it's very clear that whoever faces the never champion next is going to be getting that tough, strong, hard uh, stone pit bull uh, style. So it it's bittersweet because I, I, I've, I've said it many times, a big Jay White fan, I'm a big Jay White supporter. I think he was doing great things with the belt, but I also... I understand the appeal of Tomohiro Ishii, never champion, kicking ass, taking names, and apparently showing up on Dynamite this Wednesday, teaming up with Orange Cassidy. Lots going on for Ishii. But John, what did you think of uh, of Jay White, uh, Tomohiro Ishii, the main event of Battle in the Valley? Uh, first of all, like I told you, uh, if you're not going in to win, you're not going to win, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think last yesterday we talked about or yesterday. Last episode, I only live episode to episode. Uh, last episode, we talked about how, uh, you know, he just wants to put on a great match. Winning is, you know, secondary. Well, obviously that shows. And, um, the other thing is, uh, blood, uh, blood type O supremacy. Once again, Tomohiro Ishii okay. and I, blood brothers, both of us, uh, them, yep. them O types killing it. Uh, so <laughs> boom. It's not, and I was going to say, that's not the first time an O type has won apparently in, in new Japan, as John has been keeping us up to date with all of the blood types <laughs> of the various new Japan wrestlers. Listen, or at least it's there. For I was going to say. I was going to say, or at least the ones who have opted to put that information on New Japan uh, or NJPW1972.com. Um, but, but yeah. But, but the thing is, dude, the, match was, the match was wild, though. It yep. was. Um, I saw uh, it, but it was clean enough. I mean, it wasn't like. Yep. It was like, you can't, you can't go, you can't say he didn't. I mean, they both pushed it, right? But you, you can't, yep. you can't say it was anything other than a clean, clean dang yep. win. No, there was there was no low. I mean, don't get me wrong. Jay was as vicious as he usually is. He was throwing, you know, Ishii into the the uh, railing yeah, and stuff dirty. like that. But I mean, there's, no, exactly. There's no no one was get no one got corroded. Yeah. There was no, uh, no there was no interference. Like nope. it, it, you're you're right. It was a straight down the middle contest. Ishii, I think, had a little bit. I think I think Jay White kind of screwed himself up by telling Ishii that if he lost, he was never going to get that never title again. Because I think yeah. it lit that much more of a fire under Ishii to prove that hey, this is my title. Don't don't tell me when I can and can't uh, challenge for the, it. The dude had a chance to like not just pound the guy, but pound him like six feet under. Mm -hmm. And and when you get that chance, with somebody that vicious, they're gonna fucking take it. Yes. And, and yes, it was fucking wild. It was absolutely, it was a wild, wild match. As we said, battle in the Valley from this past Saturday. Yeah, it was Saturday. Yeah, it was Saturday. Saturday. It's been a very, it's been a very long weekend. I'll explain why in a second. But yeah, Saturday battle in the Valley in San Jose. They also made some announcements that New Japan is going to be coming back to North America in 2022. And then also last night, they made an announcement that they'll be returning to Los Angeles on December 9th. So lots of, lots of chances to catch New Japan strong as it, it keeps welcoming fans back and you can finally get a taste of that uh of that that show that has been it's been really bubbling up now that the fans are there and people can actually like are really starting to to talk about new japan strong and it's being carried by guys like tom lawler had a, a fantastic showing but one guy that i do want to talk about if we're going to talk new japan strong we're going to talk battle in the valley and all the stuff around it fred rosser showing a completely new side to himself in some of these promos, threatening to come to Tom Lawler's house and murder him, which is what uh, the lip, uh, from what I can tell, the lips said, because they had to mute his promo on New Japan World, because again, he threatened to go to someone's house no. and murder them. <laughs> Sorry, but is that, is that blow now? Blow him up, now, right? Now, is, blow him up and murder yeah, him. Yeah, it's something like, is yeah. The, the, the lip syncing I was able to read was kids was in there involved some. I, I was now, reading if the- a, If it's a no DQ match, is that allowed? 
Technically, yes. If it's a no okay. DQ match, that's allowed. If it's if it's not, that's not allowed. <laughs> right. um, that, that's the kind of thing that you need. You need hold harmless agreements to, to get that kind of thing together. But no, if if you haven't seen it, go back watch Fred Roster's promo. You can either read his lips or read Rocky Romero's face as he's just kind of standing next to him <laughs> while Fred goes off. But it it it's kind of the I, the reason I bring it up is it's kind of the 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 for lack of a better term, the linchpin in this new Fred Rosser that he has brought to New Japan Strong. Like, he's really wanted to prove that he is, is he's not the Darren Young of old. He's been busting out, uh, he's got a new move called the Gut Feeling. That's the old Emerald Flosion, Misawa's old finishing move. He's he's angry, he's mad, he's full of fire. I mean, what do you, Karen, what do you think of this new Fred Rosser, of, of New Japan Strong's Fred Rosser? I like this new Fred Rosser because it's living up to the conversation we had last time that baby faces can get pissed off. Yes. And in Philadelphia, when they held him down and cut his hair in the middle of the ring, I was like, this man better, ooh, are, he are better he's... just like turn it to 25 and just go. And then he went. Yep. <laughs> Rocky are, Romero was in the you... background sweating to death. <laughs> are you still a baby face though if you make death threats? I feel like that's a that's a good little bit of an alignment change, right? Brian he Pillman could be, he could be chaotic neutral at that point, but All it's right. one of those things where it's just I, I was they crossed a line. Yeah. And if you cross the line, you hit the right button. Sometimes that button's the explosion button and kaboom. I mean aren't threat Arn threatened to to paint a guy's uh <laughs> paint the streets with a guy's brains and everyone went yeah Arn is great uh hell Brian Pillman pulled a gun on Stone Cold Steve Austin and people haven't stopped talking about it I really home invasions <laughs> and threats of murder are as old as wrestling itself at this point Seth Rollins just went over and, and stopped yep. uh, Edge's house right there you go exactly drank his orange so juice and shit <laughs> like is there a fucking more egregious thing than to walk into a goddamn man's house and drink his orange juice. Well, you know, according, to, according to Fred Rosser, there is. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. I don't know, man. I, threaten me all you want, but you touch my OJ, it's over. Indeed. <laughs> also talking about blowing up people and shit. Yeah. Uh, Damn. Kids. Yeah, that might be worse. That might, that's a little worse. Yeah. Okay. Like worse. It, it, it was in front of his kids. I think in front of his kids. Oh, oh. He left the kids oh, out I, of I, it. I, I, all I thought was kids. I was like, he's all... Yeah, no, it, 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 I, if I read it correctly, it was, I'm going to drag you out of your house and... Yep in front of your kids yeah he went he was maybe he's he like, keeps goats you don't know maybe he's got it's, goats <laughs> it's like it's like true detective season two you know he just he sometimes sometimes you get a little overboard but look if i like i said i would rather have a fred rosser that's a little too angry than a guy that like that you don't see that fire behind you know what i mean like i that this is wrestling it's an aggressive aggressive sport and so i'm 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 all for it I just want them to drop the unedited audio so that I can sample it for a drill track because that would be a perfect introduction to a song. You get the get the bells in there as he's as he's kind of fading out. Like I could I heard the whole thing, um, but it it definitely it definitely feels like New Japan Strong making making some big big moves. Not only did Fred Rosser threaten to to, to murder Tom Lawler. Will Osprey, as we talked last week, has been kind of running around, running his mouth. He's got a, a title belt that he bought from the Tokon shop, and he's calling himself the real world champion. He's he's he he's been fighting. <laughs> Here's the thing: he's been fighting young lions. He's been fighting guys like 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 Clark Connors and Ren Narita, and the LA Dojo guys. And we've been talking about it on the podcast, Tommy. You even had some choice words for Osprey about the fact that he's not really defending uh, a lot at the moment. Uh, and Osprey seemingly stepped up at, after Okada beat Buddy Matthews in a damn fine semi-main event. Osprey showed up. He had his his belt with him. Okada had his belt with him, and they kind of had a battle over whose Fugazi championship is more important. Shingo Takagi was on commentary the whole time, reminding them that hey, I'm here and I'm the actual <laughs> one with the belt. But it does Poor not Shingo, change. Man got they, no respect for Shingo in his game. They, 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 nobody. They, <laughs> They cuckolded Shingo while he was on commentary. That's fucked up. I feel so right? bad for him. I feel like, so. It's like making a dude. It's like making a dude direct a porno with his wife in it. My <laughs> champion, right? Yeah. This respect is fucking real, y'all. He's like, especially the way Osprey and Okada were talking. Like they made it sound like the January fifth match is going to be Okada Osprey, and so Shingo's just standing there, like one of you has to beat me first. So sh sit down, shut the hell up. 
What's that? What, you guys ever seen the, the office with the guy they moved down yep. to the basement? Yep. <laughs> That's like Shinga, but but yep. but, but guys, uh, but, uh, 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 every... my stapler, my stapler, I'm the champion. <laughs> but eventually, someone's gonna get confused, and and the fake title's the one that's actually gonna get defended, and then oh no, he's, he'll be title, he'll be the champion for like ten years, but nobody will remember. Shingo's gonna be like, I'm gonna burn this place down. <laughs> <laughs> to be to be fair, if we're talking office space, that dude did end up burning the place down. So <laughs> not hey, count man, Shingo out. Don't mess with the red swing line. Nobody yep. messes with the red swing line. Just in case he ever goes crazy. Just everybody's like, I like Shingo. I think he's a cool guy. And you know, yep. I got nothing bad to yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's um I you know, it's, it's kind of crazy because I feel I feel like if Shingo's the real champ, right? And that 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 should be the last battle, like instead of on the fifth, right? Mm -hmm. So you got the fourth and the fifth. What the, what do you guys feel about that uh, Okada and Osprey's match being moved behind? So it'll be Shingo and, and Okada first, right? Yep, it's Shingo and Okada, and then Osprey takes on the winner of Shingo Okada. I I feel like since this since Osprey's been running around saying that he's the real champ. And he beat Shingo. I feel like Shingo needs to put an ass open on him <laughs> to, mm. solid, to solidify that, to make that point across. That I'm the real champ. That I feel like that's the only way they could cover that. Yeah. But to, to but 100%. to drop that, you know, you know. But but, I mean, what do you guys think? Because I'm I'm kind of with you. Because like, here's the thing. I think Osprey does have a claim. He was not pinned yeah. for the belt. He didn't submit for the belt. He was injured. It was vacated. But. This happens a lot in UFC. A guy will get popped for an eighty or for a USADA uh, test, or they'll get injured or whatever, and so you'll have a cha an extra champion from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, I I but think hey, what, this is not popping. This is injury. You you vacate yeah. that, right? I yeah, think, you I vacate think what, that. I, being injured is is kind of like a loss in and of itself, unless yeah. you know. Unless it happened, maybe you were skateboarding out in the parking lot and you, you know, broke your tibia or some shit. That's different. But like, yep. you get injured in the ring, you're the champion. It gets vacated. It gets vacated. You don't get it back. Yes. Know? No. And I, I'm again. I, I'm with y'all on this. And, and with, I got no I'm problem with, with him doing yeah. number one contender, some number one contender yeah. shit. But that, but once he starts, I, once he starts pissing all over the belt by bringing in his own fake one. I think he loses his claim at that point. And I, I, and, I, I, and I think especially since Okada has, he hasn't fully done the same thing because the IWGP that he's got represents the G1 win, but they're both running around with championships that aren't necessarily championships. I think those two should settle it first. Then the winner gets Shingo. Shingo's had a damn fine year, you know? Now, hey, now here's my thing though. Like even Okada's claim, right? You got, you got, I think there's a, like a little bit like fucked up situation here too because Okada didn't really win win. You know what I'm saying? It's he true. Won. He still he still needs to beat Abushi. Like yeah, he didn't really win win, and he brought back a a, a dead belt. Mm -hmm. Like your your claim isn't really you're you're not really standing on solid ground. You're standing on mud right now, because the G you're saying you're the G one champion, but you didn't really win though. You know what I'm yep. saying? Like you ain't beat him one two three. He got hurt, just <laughs> like Osprey got hurt. So there's like there's all these like situations that need to be done right. And I don't think anybody has a real solid claim to anything right now, except Shingo, who, who rightfully was passed down. He was the second in, in mm -hmm. line and he has the most right right now. I feel he, he won, he won the belt. He actually yeah. beat Okada. Like it's not mm -hmm. like they awarded Shingo the belt, but you sound like every, you pretty much sound like everyone that's not Okada and Osprey in New Japan right now. Cause Shingo mm -hmm. keeps saying it. Naito keeps saying it. A bunch of people are like, just confiscate Osprey's belt. What the hell's going on? Uh, like there is this, there is this cloud hanging over Wrestle Kingdom, especially since we keep talking about January fourth and January fifth. There's also January eighth that we're gonna have to at some point deal with uh, in Yokohama, and so it it I'm feels like even <laughs> it feels like even by January fifth, this isn't necessarily going to be figured out. It's like you said, whoever. Whoever wins that world title, I feel like, is going to have to deal with Kota Ibushi because Ibushi doesn't feel like he lost. He was ready to keep going in that match with, you know, one arm hanging off its out of its socket. Uh, and so Ibushi, once he's healed, I feel like is going to be going to want to get right back in that mix. And while and while I believe that all three of the guys that are currently in the world title mix have a claim to it, if we're going to do that, Ibushi does kind of have a claim to see if he can get that G1 final 
back. Wait, 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 wait. Why do you say Ibushi has a claim to it? Because it because it it's like you said, Okada didn't really beat Ibushi. Ibushi beat Ibushi. Okay. And so therefore Okada still needs to get that that if if as we've said, an injury does count as a loss, but he needs uh-huh. that he needs that that he needs to beat him one, two, three, I feel like, for a lot of people to feel like Ibushi's claim is done. All right, Karen, I'm gonna get to you in a second. All what? right. I feel okay. Ibu, I know what you're saying about Ibushi, yeah. but he's gonna have to just wait. Get that he's gonna have to wait until let's say New Japan Cup. Okay. That's, uh, you know, you gotta earn. I mean, you. It was a tournament. You were in a tournament. Mm-hmm. You know, and you oh. got hurt. You weren't the champion. You know, it, where you get first contender. You know, mm-hmm. but like you're in the tournament, and if you got hurt in a tournament at the final, I mean, you, you're hurt, but. You know, there's another tournament for you to come back and really run through that gauntlet again and get that claim to be, you know, a champion. But I don't mm-hmm. think you should get skipped. You know, I'm just I mean, saying, I oh, this ain't karate kid. Yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> no. just like Okada, he didn't uh, like to me. I mean, he, he, uh, no, yeah, I, I get all right. You're not, you didn't beat no Ibushi. I mean, for all we know, Ibushi could have beat, beaten you if he didn't get hurt. <laughs> So but, you but don't he have a true because claim. He got, because he got hurt. I mean, if, yeah. if bushi has got a claim, then Osprey has a claim, and I can't entertain that. So Okay, that's fair. You see, my <laughs> thing is, I'm between Osprey, Ibushi, Okada, and Shingo. Well, not Shingo. I'm actually going to leave Shingo. it out of this no, group. Shingo's the actual no, champion. <laughs> you know, but, uh, uh, well, no, that's not my point. Osprey, Okada, and Ibushi are the three guys who it feels like New Japan management. Just let them... Do whatever. Okada's like, give me the IWGP belt. They give him the IWGP belt. Ibushi wants to unify the titles. They unify the titles. Uh, Osprey, don't get me wrong. They have. It, I don't think they've given him as much as they've given the other two, but they haven't confiscated that title yet. And so, like, I'm gonna assume right? that they they're pre- and they gave him the official match Where's on the January title 5th. Police at man. We exactly. Got the title police. <laughs> and so that's. Oh what, yeah, that's, you need title enforcers. That's what you and need. So, yeah, and so that's why there's part of me that's like, if Ibushi asks to be in that mix, I feel like New Japan management will be like, yeah, sure, go for it. Why not? It's your your Ibushi. We love you, buddy. <laughs> I feel um, like Bull- Bullet Club is open for hire right now, right? Like they could just hire Bullet Club to enforce all these all this title bullshit. <laughs> you guys would be fair about it, right? And impartial. Yeah, of, course. of course. Of course. Yes. We're always yeah. fair in our dealings. I'll personally we... guarantee it 100 percent I'll personally guarantee it. <laughs> that's that that's a blood guarantee from John. He's he yeah, will, uh... We type out so fuck around, you know. Ask <laughs> ask ask Stone Pitbull, you know? Aaron, you know? What were you trying to say earlier before I cut you off? Oh, that's all right. So I'm gonna go back to Ren Narita because I love me some Ren Narita. He called Osprey out and said, you were injured. If you were a real champion, you should have surrendered the belt. New Japan made a choice to vacate it, but not confiscate it. And he's, he went to LA with the belt. He's gone to every other show since then with the belt. He's gone to the UK with the belt. He tried to technically Where make the Narita match. the IWGP com- committee? Why aren't they being like, yeah, uh, about that, son? No, back of the line. I feel bad for Shingo because Shingo is the actual champion. He put the company on his back the entire summer. (laughs) He's been around. He was in the G1. (laughs) I think he was in the G1. He was in the G1, right? It's all blurring together at this point. Shingo? Yeah, he was in the G1. He almost, he was, who? Yeah, so it's, it's one of those things where it's just like, we talked about Osprey getting his golden ticket and sauntering in, but he should not be main eventing night two against Okada. He's got a fake well, belt. He Okada's still... got a brief or a, a belt in lieu of a briefcase. So I don't could... know what they couldn't just repaint Jay White's briefcase from last year. I don't know what's going on with that. So why aren't they having their little standoff on night one? It's and it's then not... facing the actual champion right. on night two. But right? here's the here's the thing. It's not it's not Osprey Okada on night two. It's Osprey versus the winner of Takagi versus Okada on night but, one. But I know Takagi but, still has a chance. Like there is still a chance that Takagi beats Okada for a second the time. Then finally get. To, he should right, have right. to defend against. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Like, okay. It's, it's back. The, the way they have it yep. set right now, it's backwards. It's backwards. Yes. Mm-hmm. Either yes. on night one, Osprey has to fight Shingo, or Osprey has to fight Okada. Okay, I'm okay. sending an email. Uh, I'm sending an email. I'm gonna <laughs> tell him they got that shit because backwards. Because Shingo is the actual champion, and they're yeah. treating him like third place. Yeah, the company where he's supposed to, to be at the top. Mm-hmm. Right. 
Exactly. Man, does anybody know how to start one of those change.org petitions? We'll get the shit fixed. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> and fill out a comment card on uh on their website. Oh yeah, well, fill it up. Everybody, everybody, fill out a comment card <laughs> right now. <laughs> Leave, leave the poor new Japan social media guys alone. Yep. Don't don't harass them. They're, de- they're dealing with enough right now. Um, but, yeah, but yeah, that's that's my take on it. No, and it's it's a it's a fair point. I do I I I do agree with the idea that Okada and Osprey should be settling their issue before anyone starts wrestling for the belt. But I also do see the argument that since Okada won the G one, that he should that the G one winner is is supposed to in some philosophical way. Uh, challenge for the belt on January 4th. I don't know if if necessarily the IWGP committee or the G1 committee or whoever oversees the G1 win has quite adapted to the two-night Wrestle Kingdom yet. Because so far, every, it's, yeah, pretty, except for Jay White's year, pretty much every year the, the there's been a defense on January 4th and a defense on January 5th. A lot of the times it's, the, it's been the champion having to defend two nights in a row. Um, or in the case of Double Gold Dash, you know, they're, they're kind of creating a new champion yeah the past two years has been a little i think the whole situation is yeah. with has mm-hmm. been fucked that's just, I, that's I, just I, status I'm, and i'm not gonna blame that i'm not gonna blame that on on uh on the pandemic i'm not gonna no. put that on the pandemic because that was is, pre-pandemic I was, yeah yeah, yeah it, this has been kind of like uh, screwing man and i don't know what's going well, on I, I just feel i just see the the, the disrespect towards shingo mm-hmm. not only from you know will osprey or the wrestlers but also from the company, yeah, you know, and so it's just like, yo, you know, that's this is how you treat your champ. That's kind of fucked up. Well, not yeah. not just how they treat the champ. This is how they treat the guy who stepped up after the after the last right. champ was injured. Because like, if if oh, if Takagi was just like a champion who won the belt and it was he was one of many champions that it would still be disrespectful, but especially because of the way he stepped up in the past year, and especially because of the way that he's really been carrying this company, it does feel very weird that he doesn't get the the privilege that Okada gets, the privilege that, that Ibushi or Osprey or any of the other kind of like top top guys, so to speak, in New Japan have been getting. And Shingo, I think he damn well deserves that, especially after the, the year he's had. I'm still holding out that he wins on night one, he wins on night two, and he he finally redeems the year he's had. But man, they're making it hard on him. They're making it real, real hard on the champion. Um, For sure, but, man. Yeah, and and it's it's been a it's been to be fair, it's been a very busy time in New Japan. So they might be <laughs> they might be waiting to figure this out until the end of the end of uh, all of the stuff that's going on. Because like I said. Battle in the Valley was one of many shows on Saturday. If you were trying to keep oh, up with all... wait, 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 wait. Before we forget, I'm going to jump into something that you Do brought it. up earlier that I had no clue about. And, I, you know, uh, somebody mentioned here. What did you say that Jay White and Kenny Omega did a face-off? Did I they hear did a, that right? Back at back at back on Impact Wrestling, back at like I want to say oh, spring or back summer. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that's gotcha, what because gotcha, that's gotcha. that's how I was opening it up because this is re- I mean really this I was is like, Saturday. How did I missed this. No, this Saturday was the ballad of of Kenny and Jay. Like it was it was really those two who had had that stare down in Impact, being like, "Hey, we're the we are the Forbidden Door." Now they both are they are both without titles. I mean, Kenny's still got the the AAA Championship, but it, that for how much longer is is to be determined hey they both um, they both who is triple a yeah they, um, they, they both fucked around and found out exactly exactly <laughs> uh but yeah it was it was a jam-packed weekend for new japan they had battle in the valley they also had an, a damn fine episode of new japan uh showdown featuring chris dickinson versus minoru suzuki and best of super juniors also world tag league it's been a it's been a very very packed weekend and then also aew full gear on top of it so uh, before before we end up spending the entire hour talking about the wrestle kingdom uh kerfuffle <laughs> the the quagmire at the top of the card uh we can inst- we can move and let's a i want to send out what's before we move on from battle in the valley i want to send some good vibes to chris dickinson who suffered a, just a heinous hip injury uh in a in a tag match battle in the valley he it sounds like he's already taking to physical training like a duck to water but we we definitely want to send some good vibes to it's a terrible time to get an injury uh that that severe but every time he's come back from injury he's come back strong and ready to kick ass so he's going to be unstoppable after this one um but yeah shout out shout out to dickinson shout out to everyone that, that kicked ass took names at battle in 
the Valley. It was it was a damn fine show. Also, shout out to Buddy Matthews. Before we move on from that, Buddy Matthews making his New Japan debut. Karen's already applauding, so I kind of want to throw it to her. What did you think of, of Okada, the Rainmaker versus Buddy Matthews? Well, it was really cute that they kind of had matching gear. Like, the mm-hmm. color scheme was exactly the same. But I went, like I, we talked about previously, from the moment he got released, New Japan was the place I wanted to see him. Mm-hmm. It sucked for me that I couldn't be in San Jose to watch it live but I think if he is to become a permanent member of the roster he will do exceptionally well in Mm -hmm. New Japan and New Japan Strong. I'm I'm with you because like when he was in WWE he was always like the New Japan fans WWE superstar like he was the one doing the V trigger he would do the Stormbreaker like pretty much you could always tell in his 205 live matches what uh, New Japan show Buddy Murphy had watched like the week before. Well, and, and his so- finisher is, the, is the, whale, the Murphy's Law is a whale hunter. Exactly. So Shingo's finishing move made in Japan. Yes. Yes, it is. And so it's it it does kind of, it's nice to see him in this atmosphere for once because like, and now he, it, it, because he's not the only one doing the New Japan move, so to speak, he's now able to really show who he is as a wrestler as opposed to like his influences. And I think I think this really made a good case for for Buddy Murphy the or Buddy Matthews I'm sorry Buddy Matthews the uh, the independent star and you're 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 spot on about the color scheme I spent the entire match thinking like hey, Buddy Matthews would be okay in chaos like he he kind of fit right alongside Okada there like it felt like a like a tryout match um, I could also chaos sucks I know I was I was about to say I could also see him in Bullet Club if we're gonna be real <laughs> real honest no 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 Wait, no no I don't he wouldn't fit nah he doesn't fit Bullet Club nah. if it, if I could also in chaos he wouldn't fit in Bullet Club I you? could also see him in Lij I've I've just got visions of I got visions of sugar plums dancing in my head I don't know um it definitely <laughs> it definitely feels like like Buddy Matthews uh showed out against Okada he did I obviously did not get the win but it does feel like he would be he would be a great addition to to really anyone's roster at this point but but New Japan especially it feels like someplace that he's wanted to be for a while now uh and also speaking of people showing yeah, up I, I guess I guess I guess I guess I could see him in chaos huh a little bit yeah like yeah, it's I'm, especially I'm trying be- to think of what well, scar you know, like and know, his so. attitude will be more chaos yeah, he's he's a little more. I like. Don't get me wrong. I think I think you guys could could make him. Ang- I've seen him be angry. I've seen him be a bad guy. But I, I he does kind of seem a little bit more respectful uh, in in his post WWE uh, uh, character. But speaking of post WWE appearances at Battle in the Valley, Jonah Rock, the former Bronson Reed, is back in New Japan. He attacked Juice Robinson. He had a showdown, he had a stare down with Moose, which leads me to believe that he'll finally make it to Impact. He was originally supposed to be at Bound for Glory back in October, but immigration issues kept that from happening. Uh, what, I'm going to throw to you, John. What did you think of, of Bronson, or the former Bronson Reed, Jonah Rock, making his return to, to New Japan? He, he was on the, the Australian tour, but now he's, he's, the, he's here proper, it seems. It seems like, I mean, he's kind of a destructor, right? Yep. I mean, he's just kind of just a, uh, a plow. I think that there's kind of a lot of that going on right now, and I don't know mm-hmm. actually where he fits in. Uh, I hope he doesn't kind of get lost in the shuffle after a while. Uh, sometimes, especially in NJPW, it seems like if you're too big and that's kind of, I don't want to say that's all he's got. I mean, the dude's talented. Mm-hmm. Um, but if that's just kind of like all you got, they tend to book you a certain way, and you know that's kind of how it's get, you're going to get stuck. I hope he finds some versatility. If I had to give him some advice, obviously he listens to this podcast. So, you know, yeah. uh, I, I would find some versatility in his mo- both his move set and also, you know, how he presents himself. Um, yeah. And, <clears throat> and, that, and that's from coach. And that's from coach John, by from the way, coach. who last week coach Tomataga by telling him he should win matches. And then he won his tag match. Yep. I just want, I'm just saying people should listen we, to me. That's all. Well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. All but right, yeah, right, co- right. coach John bringing up coach John bringing up a very good point that uh jonah he he does need to kind of especially with guy you know because jeff cobb i think has been carrying the super heavyweight banner in new japan right now yeah and i and this might be because i spent so many years watching wwe but there's part of me it's like they need to have more than one super heavyweight so that way cobb isn't just that way it's not only cobb being the 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 kaiju so to speak the the big ass destroyer and so and like maybe i feel like, i feel maybe there's maybe that's why i feel that way because that is kind of like what goes on with jeff cobb and yep. maybe if they were more quote unquote Jeff Cobbs, maybe it wouldn't be so bad. 
Exactly, because he he's he's a quick guy. He's a, don't get me wrong. He is a big guy, but he's also a, he's a speedy powerhouse. And so I would not be I would not be surprised to to see Jonah Rock kind of pick up some of that that super heavyweight slack. Like I I I do think that he's the kind of I, I kind of disagree. I think he's the kind of heavyweight New Japan has needed for a little bit. Like they, I think they he was he really he he poses a threat. I don't know. It, it, maybe I'm still just. Uh, it's a recency bias after watching him kick Juice's ass in that that brief little dust up, but uh, I mm. he does seem to he does seem to have some viciousness, and he if even he does he also seems like he's ready to make a point. Like if if you watch that that promo he cut, he is he's not here to fuck around. What do you think, Karen, of, of Jonah's debut or return? I'm sorry, he's been in New Japan before. If he were to he wouldn't be a good fit for chaos but if him and mikey nichols could reunite and be tmdk and mm-hmm. eventually convince shane thorne to leave wwe and be shane haste again i'd be happy mm-hmm. but before he was in new japan in the australia tour he was also in pro wrestling noah mm-hmm. so suzuki goon would be the perfect place for a new monster there you go. As, lest we forget we also have the super heavyweight that is Fale, who is finally back yep <laughs> Exactly. Oh, and, yeah. those, and, those two should butt heads. And if we're talking about Suzuki Gun, they've lost some some bigger heavyweights over the past like year. Lance Archer is still in North America with AEW. Uh, don't get me wrong, Davy Boy Smith Jr. might show back up now that he's been released uh, from WWE. But also, you know, they can't bring back Izuka. He was a big ass dude as well. So Suzuki Gun could use a big ass motherfucker, for lack of a better term, like Jonah Rock. Um, in I'm 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 stoked for him because I I know that he has been he's been kind of champing at the bit since he got released from WWE to make a name for himself. Like I said, he was supposed to be at Bound for Glory in October. Immigration issues kind of held him back from that, and so it seems like he's ready to come out of that starting gate uh, swinging. Um, but yeah, but a lot a lot of news coming out of Battle in the Valley. A hell of a show. Uh, like I said, they'll be coming back to the Hollywood Vermont on uh, December 9th, and then they'll be having a, a, a sort of, uh, it's not a, necessarily a tour, but they will be back in January, they'll be back in February, and they'll be back in March to do some tapings in uh, Los Angeles, St. Petersburg, slash Tampa, and uh, one other place that it, Seattle. Seattle. Seattle was, yep, Seattle was the last one. And so those are those are going to be the New Japan, that's going to be the New Japan Strong schedule. They just did a, a taping of Detonation on monday but i i think that i think that covers the north american front of new japan so let's let's talk about best of super juniors let's talk about tag league because uh this is i'm gonna start with super juniors because this is not uh this is not your father's super juniors i'm gonna go through the list of people that are undefeated so far in super juniors competition we have Sho, yoshinobu kanemaru and doki everyone else has has either lost one or lost both of them but the the three that are up at the top right now are kanamaru doki and Sho. uh and so it's it definitely feels like and we're only we're only a couple a couple of shows into it so still plenty could change but it feels like el desperado a little bit behind the eight ball he's lost to show he's lost to ishimori uh bullet club kind of being a thorn in his side right now Yo, not having an easy time in the tournament right now. He lost in under five minutes to Hiromu Takahashi, then uh, then was beaten soundly the next night. Uh, it it hasn't been your your typical uh, best of Super Junior so far. A lot of the, a lot of the kind of a, a lot of the sort of lesser known juniors are really making a name for themselves. I love it. I'm stoked. Uh, you know, if you've listened to this podcast, you know I'm a Doki fan. You know that I I can. I, I I love I love me some some underserved yeah. juniors. Uh, you go Karen, doki doki for doki. Absolutely doki doki doki. Oi oi oi. Yeah. Uh, but Karen, what have you kind of been thinking of uh, of the best of super juniors as it's been as it's kind of getting its start going right now? Now you know shows my boy, right? Yep. Yes, I do. For for four years, that boy has been my boy. Mm-hmm. Dick Togo really went evil, copy paste on the show. I don't need that man using chairs and wrenches and all of House of Torture to beat people when he was one of the final four on his own last year. Mm. It hurts me to know that show is cheating more than ELP is. Well, it's not and cheating. He it's, won it's, it's two super Jacobs by cheating his way to the finish. 
Nah, uh, they're called the House of Torture. Those are implements of torture. It's entirely within their It's means. torturing my heart to watch it. It's painful. Because the it's boy, just, the, the he, dude's sorry, got the tactics. The dude's got he's tactics. Really, he's got talent. He doesn't need to be like the only. There's no junior in House of Torture besides Show. And the Dick Togo's a junior. By height only. But that, <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard the dude. The dude. The dude goes you, away I, and not his. I told his you, I'm gonna really get into a fight with Dick Togo. Over no, there. I know. I will, he's ruining my son. <laughs> uh, it's like. It's like it's like those dudes who get really sweaty so they can cut weights just so they can get in like one lower class, you know. Mm. Karen, what you're failing to see is his create. He's learning his more creative offenses. That's I'm, what that's I'm, what you're 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 failing to understand here. He's I'm he's expanding his repertoire. Offense, mm. But yeah. I want him to do it on his own. Yeah. I want him. If well, he's what did somebody to, pick up the chair for? Be a murder machine. A murder machine doesn't have like a posse. But, no, but a murder machine has many parts. Mm-hmm. Gears, there you go. dogs, you know. Sometimes and hell, sometimes 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 <laughs> you need it. I hate it. You know? Sometimes <laughs> you need some sometimes you need a maintenance guy to come in there with a wrench and just tweak some <laughs> <Yeah>. stuff. <laughs> Ross could have waited for that when he was <laughs> oh, Ross, that was pretty good. I, yes. What can I say? I it you should I, write music. <laughs> I, you know, I can I can see where where Karen is coming from because I I do feel bad for yeah. the the Rapongi 3K fans who have a murder the... machine jingle rock. <laughs> oh wait, but, wait is R- Rapongi 3K still around? No, but there, there's yo, no Rapongi 3K fans. But that's the problem. There there are people that were emotionally uh, deeply invested in Show and Yo, and now Show has gone to the dark side completely. I mean, don't get uh, me wrong. Before he was mad. Now he's now he's got Dick Togo straight up choking people out. And in Yo has <laughs> Yo has not been able to get any momentum started yet in this uh in this um in this tournament. And so Dick it, running around choking people. <laughs> yeah. I was just gonna say Ross, can you can you pause in between sentences where you sit where you talk about Dick and say <laughs> Jeez, oh man. no! But, Listen, the murder oh, machine's no. gonna murder. It's what he does. Like there's no, he, you can't call a dude the murder machine and then not let him murder. You know. Yep. <laughs> and he's and he's been murdering. I mean, like I, I, you, you I'm. Gotta, you, I'm gotta, you gotta get your hands dirty sometimes. Yeah. You know? No, and and quite frankly, after seeing like the entire House of Torture in the ring at the end of night one, where it's it's the when you can really see the whole group as they are now. Man, as I feel like evil has he's leading the group, but man, show is that front man right now. Show is like the he feels like the the center of House of Torture at the moment. Um, maybe part of it's because it's best of super juniors and they're just they're letting him have that that moment, but it it does feel like it does feel like this is you know, this is evil in show's group. Well well at least he well, I mean at least show won his. So, you know, yeah. there's that. <laughs> It's, and hey, there's still there's still time for evil. There's still no, time course. for everyone. No, no, it's, there's a lot of tournament left to go. But yeah, it it does. I'm it it's hard to watch, but I'm also very I'm 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 also just excited about the fact that show is is getting is working smarter. You know what I mean? Because like last year he worked very hard. He made it to the final four. Yeah. But this year, if he can if he can you know save some wear and tear by getting a little bit of help, that might be what gets him to oh, that yeah. final. Because then he's not as he's not as tired by the end. I I'm I, I can see I can see Karen's frustration. Yeah, no, of course I can see the hurt that she's going through with with her man, going through it, man. with her boy, with her son. But <laughs> but it you know we talked about this last year karen that for him to change pace for him to to expand to to grow that he would have to turn a, a page a chapter and i think this was the chapter in this chapter is a little dark <laughs> there's some dark pages you know and and, yeah. and i feel this is this is a way for him to still be like you know, he was he, like, okay, let's let's in terms of Star Wars, right? Mm-hmm. In the in the you you got the Jedi. He's learning the light, the the way of of, of oh shit, I'm going blank here. Of, of the good you're, good. You're side. turning him into Anakin Skywalker, right? Yes. Now. So he I'm must happy. come to the dark side to learn heart. all the way, mm-hmm. and then oh. he'll yeah, then you can get you can get pulled back towards the middle if you have to. Maybe yes. he overshot a little bit. 
you know, maybe, yes. but that's where you learn. You learn in the dark, you know, and mm-hmm. then yes. you bring some of those tools with you back to the middle a little you, bit. You got to be yin and yang. You got to have yeah. a balance and he's got to learn. He's got to learn the yeah. dark ways. Karen, your boy, he's going to school right now. I yeah. know. And he's got to fucking win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a good point. It's a, no, and I, this is, you can't, can't, you can't come to the dark ways and keep losing. Yeah. That's, that's, Don't worry that way. That's not, that's not the point of this class. <laughs> <laughs> it, look, all, all I'm saying is House of Torture formed in Yujiro beat Ibushi. So I feel like, I feel like show with House of Torture behind him can really do some crazy, crazy stuff. Um, I, and again, I've said this many times and I've said it about evil. I've said it before. Yeah, Bullet Club is at its best when it's breaking people's hearts, and right now, show is show's breaking a lot of hearts, and I, I feel like it's it's a it's it's a nice kind of central central point to this this best of Super Juniors. Uh, but like I said, El Desperado not having the easiest time. He's fallen to show. He's fallen to Taiji Ishimori. So Bullet Club definitely a thorn in his side right now. Uh, Ishimori, Ishimori got a it also kind of coming back from behind. He lost to to Kanemaru as his tradition uh, in the the opening night. After he had he really believed in Ishimori because he had that he got that New Japan Cup win over Kanemaru. It looked like things were finally going to turn around for Bone Soldier, but uh, unfortunately it didn't. But hey, now he's got now he's got a title match he can cash in on Desperado when this this tournament's over. So things things starting to look up for Bone Soldier. But let's let's talk about tag league. We got uh, we're we're one night into tag league so far. A lot of uh, new teams this year, so to speak. Whether it's it's folks new like Naito, old teams, old new teams. <laughs> well, I I was gonna bring up I was gonna bring up Tenzan and, and Kojima. There you go, yep. throwback teams. That, but I no, like that better. <laughs> yep. No, you got you got you definitely got the throwbacks in there. You got Great Bash Heel. You got Ten Cozy. You got some some folks that have some real serious tag league uh, credentials behind them. But then you also got uh, Bebop High School, uh, Yano and Hiroshi Tanahashi. Then you've got uh, <laughs> you, got, you got Blue Tigers, Je- uh, Yuji Nagata and Tiger Mask, and and hell, even Naito and Sonata are technically a newer tag team. They've had more success than the rest of the new tag teams. But this is, I believe, their either first or second uh, uh, G one or uh, tag league tagging together. So it definitely, uh-huh. or maybe it's it, yeah. It, so it it definitely feels like you've got some some fresh blood, you've got some old blood, and then you've also got you got dangerous techers. You got God. You've got the uh, you've got last year's winners, and so it it's it's creating this kind of like generational affair. I don't know, Tom. You 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 and your brother came in just like a house of fire against GBH uh, 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 the other day. Like you just beat the snot out of Hanma and Makabe. Uh, what did you? <laughs> oh, payback. Yeah, yeah, I was last gonna time say- we saw him wasn't wasn't too. Uh... That was a couple of years ago, right? A few years yep. ago. <laughs> so uh, it, it was nice to get a little, a little payback on that, a little receipt for the past. Yeah, you know, sends it sends a pretty, pretty chilling message to the rest of the block. If you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna, <laughs> well, the rest of the much... old people in the block. <laughs> exactly. No, no but... <laughs> Tar- Look, I, 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 Ross didn't know what to say. No, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you nearly put, <laughs> you nearly put Honma through the mat with the, with the gun stun. He almost went through the mat. So like, <laughs> my brother almost decapitated him. Yep. On a damn rope, man. Poor Homa. <laughs> oh, poor, poor Honma. But yeah, it's a it... man can't already move. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> by the by, the end of the he's gonna he's he's gonna need a, he's gonna need a vacation by the end of this yeah. by the end his, of this tournament. His, his great great grandkids are gonna feel it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But uh, uh, Karen, what have you been kind of thinking of, of the tag league side of this this dual tour that New Japan is on? All right. So, God aside, mm-hmm. Tama, you and your brother need to watch out for dangerous techers because this this the all Suzuki Goon match was <laughs> fire it was zero f's given i've never seen tai chi run to a ring and throttle anyone the way he came at taco <laughs> it was i was Yo. like oh and then suzuki's just like all right let's go he did, zach didn't even get his jacket off and suzuki's beating him down like by the front door yo so, let me tell you so something. i was like hmm Mm. Oh my gosh. That she will never fucking do that shit to me. I hell no. Nah. But uh oof. I was gonna they say I never seen Taiji that fired up before. No. 
No, that, and that, like, but that's my concern. <laughs> it felt it felt like it didn't feel like a match. It felt like Ta- Taka was getting jumped back into Suzuki Gun. They're like, "You've been gone for a while. We're gonna beat you up. Make sure that you can you can still take some lumps." Then af- after Tai Chi knocked him out with the uh, the Black Mephisto, they kind of they brought him back to his feet and were like, "Hey, we're all friends again. Everything's great." Suzuki Gun walked out to their marching theme and so like. It, 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 it was, was oddly it, touching. It's exactly like that. Was, you yeah. got to jump back in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's that's what happened. Blood in, blood out. Well, he got blood back in. Oh, yeah. That was parking lot unsafe level of. <laughs> I was just like, oh, 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 oh. I God. know in hell that you would ever do that shit to me. Don't yeah. you worry, Karen. You better Anything, knock on some, you better knock on some wood in that hotel room. Uh, <laughs> I'm man. Just, you, that was some That was some NXT 1.0 parking lot stick, you know, shit yep. going on up in there. <laughs> I was, yeah. like, I, was like, I was just like sitting there. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't have enough coffee for this. This is the first match of the night. Mm-hmm. And then <laughs> she, my, soft, my like, soft spot. But I don't know. A, I, but I don't know if that means anything for like future shit. Because that was personal. That was different. That's what I'm saying. It was it, personal. Like, don't give me the same <laughs> thing. You know, like if I, you know, if me and a friend get into it, you know, and it's personal, that's a different thing than some stranger on the street. I don't mm-hmm. know. Well, and, not, and that's not, not, not that you're a stranger on the streets of these people, Tom. I'm just saying, yeah, I don't think did you have you got something personal with them that we don't know about? Like, hey, you know, <laughs> yeah, that, that was a off. fact that was a personal infaction type uh yeah. situation that they're de- dealing with, and we yeah. saw we all saw that. I'm not sure, I'm sure a lot of the, the Japanese fans, uh, they they all saw that, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, and I, you know, like I said. Taiji will never do that shit to me. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> that, that was my larger point was that, like, don't get me wrong, Dangerous Techers has their history with GOD. They're going to come after you, but I don't think they're going to try it. They're not, it's not going to be a gang re- reinitiation like it was with Taka. Like, that was, nah. that was a specific, specific 20 minute uh, uh, ceremony. It wasn't a match, it was a ceremony welcoming <laughs> Taka back to Suzuki. Right? Uh, like they, they 20 wanna... minutes of that was, was their match and 19 and a half of it was them kicking taka's yeah. ass oh. now, now now tai chi tai chi is also blood type o according to the njpw website yeah <laughs> so i i rescind maybe you should watch out for his ass i'm telling you yeah, there's something weird going idiot. on <laughs> blood type no <laughs> blood type no <laughs> um but yeah it definitely definitely an, an oddly touching start to tag like because like i like karen i was like clutching my pearls for most of the beat down but then when they were like yeah we're all friends and they left the the marching theme song i was like oh that okay good for them you know like it it kind of warmed my heart in the the aftermath uh one one yeah once you had the full context um but yeah and then uh like like we said there has been some damn fine matchups in tag league. The you you've got to be taken on uh, Nagata and Tiger Mask, which I feel like they're a wild card because they weren't a tag team really before this, and now they're just kind of they're they've been How out well here. How like, can they really get though? <laughs> that's well, that's going to be the question because they got they got uh. the kicks. They got they they they're gonna be they're gonna be looking to come back from that loss to to Ten Cozy. So like they it ain't gonna be against us. Don't look don't towards us so. for that comeback. Damn it! I'm trying I'm trying to be the objective one here, and even I'm like, we'll send you to retire bill real quick. Yeah, I'm like it's gonna be it's gonna be an ape shit through the mat through the mat. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see uh, how that goes down. But come on, uh, man, Tiger Mass is, is a junior weight. Come on, man, I can't yep. take that shit serious. Come yeah, we've on, already man. we've already had one KO in the uh, in the tag league. We might have more. Um, hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't care if he's the champ, man. He's, he's he's damn near sixty years old and he's a junior weight, man. I can't take that shit serious. Come on, yep. come on. Uh, hey, can can I be right about that? Oh, absolutely. No, you're 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 spot on. Like like I said, there's only so much. But- <laughs> Only so much I can do. Agree with me, just gets my ass, man. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, let's see. Uh, But let's talk about let's talk about the 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 goofiness of tag league because I want to I want to bring Karen in on this to kind of like help enlighten the the viewers a little bit because I was I was as confused as many when Yano and Tanahashi showed up dressed like uh, like two high school street toughs. Uh, They had the they had the 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 black jackets they had the slicked back hair they weren't quite going full sloppy steaks but they were going they had a a pretty damn different look karen talk to us about bebop high school 
the uh, apparent inspiration for Yano and Tanahashi's uh, outfit. This will be the only time you ever hear me call Tanahashi Hiroshi because oh. I will never call that man Hiroshi to his face mm-hmm. ever. So there is a night, uh, a comic and an a- or an anime uh, graphic novel and a live action film called Bebop High School. It's mm-hmm. from 1985, but it's very, it's one of the more iconic retro uh Mm-hmm. I was gonna say stories because like I, and, I felt like I recognized the style more than I actually recognized the reference yeah so the the, the premise is that these got these guys are street thugs that go to a really rough high school that used to be a very prestigious high school but mm-hmm. throughout the years it's gone down its prestige so these you know they're wearing traditional gakuran which is the school the traditional school uniform that's based off of the military design mm-hmm. um but kids who are you know the, the the rougher kids they would either like add um length to the back of the jacket or they would wear it open with like a t-shirt underneath it but the main two characters of that series are hiroshi and toru and they pick fights with everyone so (laughs) it's one of those things where they there's like you know there's the nice girl in their class it's always like oh hiroshi toru you don't need to do that and they're all just like no we're we're (laughs) we're tough yada 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 we're gonna do it this way so when they got put together as a random tag Mm-hmm. Either last year or sometime earlier this year, all like a lot of the Japanese fans are talking like, "Oh, it's Hiroshi and Toru, it's Hiroshi and Toru." <laughs> so when they got announced as a tag league team, mm-hmm. they went on uh, Yano's YouTube channel and joked about, "Well, what what if we decide to do do a little throwback and be actually be her, like Hiroshi and Toru yeah. by, with the big pompadour hair and you know like." The, the rough kid posing, like mm-hmm. all of the things they were doing in the ring is very stereotypical, like Japanese rough kid behavior mm-hmm. or what they call Yankee behavior, which is like, you know, our version yeah. of like street. Thugs wow. Right. So it's, it's fun because they're having fun with it and it makes the pairing of the two of them seem less like less odd couple yep. because they have that long yeah. history. In the yeah, but they got to take the coats off eventually. And then they're just the odd couple again. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, but, then like, but, but they're also, wrestling also, differently. Also, I, I only yep. respect Hiroshi's Yano. Lean, or Hiroshi, oh my god. Tanahashi is leading. I call him Hiroshi. I call him Hiroshi eight. right to his face. Oh, no. I, you know, no, no, no. Give him a big old, give him a big old kiss on the more cheek. He's like... Yano's behavior by being sneaky, by being a little gritty. Like, <laughs> it's we're going to see an ace. Yeah, they're probably not going to win World Tag League. I'm resigned to that. But they're <laughs> at least going to yeah. have a good part of my language. They're going to have a good fucking time doing it. Yep. And that's yep. what's important. Well, I don't fuck. swear very often on this podcast, but that's, <laughs> that's where it is. You, Hiroshi makes me swear. You made it count. You definitely made it count on <laughs> yeah, this you one. You used your one. It was a good one. That was uh, my one for the you show. Bought a vowel. <laughs> you bought a vowel. But, uh, uh, no, but sorry, I think, I think, no, I was going to say, I, I mostly only respect Yano now as an amateur wrestler. I think he, he did really well, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and uh, really, really kicked some ass there. Got some good points. But this kind of tag, if they won, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, only because they're such a wild card, it seems like almost too stupid to not succeed. No, it's they're they, the wild card. I definitely think they're the wild yeah, card. They're That's more of a wild saying, card but, than. But if yeah. I had to put money, if I needed, if I was desperate for cash and I had to put money down on a, on a weird bet like that, that would be the one. That'd be the wild card I put my money on. They're they're the ones that I would put money on still being a tag team from time to time after tag league. Like I don't know mm, how maybe. often Nagata and and Tiger Mask are going to officially tag together but like it feels like yano and tanahashi have it it feels like they're really gelling with this like there was that yeah. certain spark to the way that they were they were playing around in that first tag league match like i i hope they keep it up i hope this isn't like a, a one-off hey this was opening night let's have some fun like i tanahashi kind of looked like bono during the like from the 80s <laughs> uh yano the look really works for yano like he had he had the slight edge to him like it just i I dig it, and I also like the fact that Yuji and Tiger Mask are both wearing blue. Like, it does feel like the odd couple teams are making that effort to be actual teams as opposed to just kind of thrown together. Yeah, like uh, and, and that's definitely that's definitely made this tag league uh, 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 just just that much more interesting, just that much more fun. And I, mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited to see where we go. Like I said, 4:30 uh, a.m. On the uh, 17th new, will be the uh, next night of World Tag League. It'll be live on New Japan World. I'll be, I'll be covering it for WrestleZone. Karen will probably be awake. We'll all be, we'll all be enjoying it uh, in some form or the other. Uh, but let's 
very briefly, since we, we, we've we talked Tagley, we've talked Best of Super Juniors, we've talked Battle in the Valley, let's talk about AEW Full Gear. Because like I said, Kenny Omega, no longer the AEW champion, he has, he has been dethroned by Hangman Page, as many, many predicted and many hoped that Hangman Page would. But not only that, a, uh, AEW had a, a kind of a bittersweet debut, if I'm going to be completely honest. They brought, right before the main event, they brought out Jay Lethal, who, if anyone knows about the, the career of Jay Lethal, this is a guy who's been a Ring of Honor lifer. This is a guy who he even said that he wanted to end his career in Ring of Honor. And so him coming over to AEW does kind of cast that pall over the Ring of Honor news, especially the way he was talking in the post scrum. It sounds like he, he really thinks the doors are starting to close over there. Uh, I'm going to throw you, John. What did you think of, of Jay Lethal debuting in, in AEW and, and kind of what this means for Ring of Honor? Maybe, possibly, who knows? I know everybody wants Charlotte to go over to AEW. Hold on, this is related. And I'd like to see her and Jay Lethal do the recreate the him and Ric Flair. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, uh, gimmick, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, if, if you haven't seen it, Jay Lethal does a damn fine Ric Flair impersonation. Uh, look look uh, up the video. The only, on... In my opinion, the only person who should be Ric Flair uh, anymore, but that's just, yep. that's just me. Uh, we don't got to get into that though. No, we had <laughs> yeah, that, it's, it's close to the end of the podcast for that shit. No, so, but let's let's go back uh, into but, it. But Jay like, Lethal, Jay Lethal's a talented fucker. And mm-hmm. listen, he's he he puts in the work, not just you know he puts in the character work, mm-hmm. and 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 he's good on stuff like the being the elite and all the extra crap, you know, all the extra ancillary auxiliary footage, you know, mm-hmm. features, all the special features. He's good in that shit too. I think he's incredibly valuable. It's a shame that, you know, if our, if the thing about ROH is true, he doesn't get to, you know, fulfill his dream, but hopefully he's found a new dream, you know. Well, well no, like this is, it, it, I don't think the, the, this is a problem for Lethal. It sounds like Lethal's very happy to be heading over to, to AEW. Everyone in Ring of Honor is, is free to, com- is free to work for other companies because they've been released from their contracts. It's just as someone who has been kind of like, well, if they're coming back independent, maybe it's going to be okay. Like I've, I have to admit, over the past couple of weeks, I've kind of been like Homer Simpson in that episode of The Simpsons, where he's like, "It's okay, the pig's okay. It's just, it's just kind of yeah, it's speeding so down the it's hill. So it's okay. It's just flying through the air. It's okay, you know." And like, yeah, and so that, Jay Lethal showing up in AEW is one of those things that kind of makes me go, "I don't. I, I think they will come back for Super Card of Honor, but we will see how, how what what the new ROH is going to look like." Because he, I mean, he was the definition of an ROH lifer, and so if he's if he's out and doing business elsewhere it seems like other people are going to be soon as well it was just announced but that, Jonathan... a, but that but but going to aw doesn't stop you from doing other stuff half the time anyway so no and like... and and again if roh is going through the the truly independent uh uh form that they are going into it's entirely possible that that anyone can be on roh tv coming in april because it's just it's just going to be about who's available um and so it's it it's not necessarily a nail in the coffin but it felt like one i mean if you if you looked at the reaction to people when jay lethal walked out it felt like people going mm, R- roh is <laughs> roh is against the ropes at the moment um well, what, but, but you know what though there's not a better you can't find a better herald than than jay lethal at least to deliver your bad news it, exactly it, <laughs> at it, least it'll be fun right <laughs> it's good news it's it's bad news wrapped in good news so i i can't i can't hate on it too much it's, karen what do you what did you kind of think of of the ROH situation now that now that Lethal is is over in and also I should add to this Jonathan Gresham just announced he's starting his own promotion on January twenty second I want to believe it's a uh, called Terminus it's going to be uh, apparently very grappling based uh, go go ahead Karen uh, the only thing that bums me out about a uh, Jay Lethal being at AEW not that I'm I'm against him having job secured or whatever it just sucks that it seems he can't be at final battle which yes. could be the final big show that's guaranteed for Ring mm-hmm. of Honor. Like, I know they're they're talking about, you know, getting a restart in quarter two, starting with Supercard of Honor in, like, yep. end of March, beginning of April. But someone who's a legacy talent for them and has done, worked as long with for them as he has, it's kind it, it's not telling, but it, it just kind of bums me out because yep. he's one of the people I would have expected hell or high water definitely there. But... If he's found a home in in uh, AEW and mm-hmm. they're paying him his worth and his family's taken care of, great. Exactly. Yeah. No. This I isn't. Mean, that's all you can ask for for anybody that signs anywhere. 
Exactly. And especially if the Ring of Honor situation is the way it is, he needs to get work somewhere. And so like I, I can't right. I can't hate on it. It's just one of like like John I think John put it best. It's 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 good news and it's bad news. It's bittersweet all all wrapped into one. It's it's like uh, when you're yeah, a dog and you're the, getting just... your heartworm pills, they put the pill in the bait you know around the bacon yeah. so you eat it while you know Exactly, yeah. No, it's a spoonful of sugar. Uh go ahead, Tom. <laughs> hey, uh just a correction on uh that Grissom show, the terminus. It's yep. actually January 16th of next year. 16th, right. I'm sorry. 16th. And it's called January Terminus, 16th. And it's in yes. Georgia where... In Atlanta. They, with, or, and with, like, Walking Dead takes place with a thing yep. called the Terminus where they eat people. So I don't know what the hell they're doing at this thing. Yeah, it it's, sounds, it, it sounds lit. It's, yeah, it if sounds great. barbecue, I'm skipping it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God, uh, if you go, don't, you know, don't eat the concessions. Yeah. Uh, but it should be cool. <laughs> It's going to be sponsored by Soylent. Um, it's yeah, it definitely it, no, but it, I'm I'm excited to see what Jonathan Gresham does with yeah. his own his own promotion. He, like he's he was one of the guys that was really championing the return of the pure division. And it sounds it sounds like Terminus is going to basically be a pure division uh, uh, company. So I'm all, I'm all I'm on board. I'm more, sold. More, more jobs. That's 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 what's important, right? Yep. As yeah, Thomas right. said, January January 16th is is when Terminus uh, debuts. But yeah. It, Jay Lethal not going to be a final battle. It does. It does kind of add that, add that twinge to it. But let's let's talk about some of the other stuff that happened at Full Gear. Let's talk about Hangman Page doing the cowboy shit, winning the title, uh, apparently getting the approval from the Bucks while doing it. It was just a very a warm feel good a feel good moment. What did you think, Karen? Well, you know when we talked about this previously. I was all in on the cowboy shit. Yeah. I wanted, I waited for two and a half years for Hangman Page to do the thing and he finally did the thing. Now getting the uh, the nod of acknowledgement and support from the Bucks, I think that means there is some trouble under the surface for mm-hmm. the elite. They're gonna have there something is afoot. I was gonna I was gonna say because you've not only got the Bucks nodding in agreement with Hangman Page, you've also got Adam Cole running around posting photos of him and the Bucks being like, "Hey, we're the best three men in in the world right now." So there, there does feel like I don't know. It feels like Kenny Omega is kind of getting getting phased out of the elite very very quietly. I don't know. We'll see what happens uh, on Wednesday. John, what did you think of the the full gear main event? Actually, uh, I didn't see it. Oh, okay, but well, I can uh, tell hang- you what I think. But you know what though, I saw it on Twitter. Okay. Right now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but no, but let me tell you about it. You know, we talking about the thing about about Hangman Page. Um, I feel like it sucked that it took him this long. Uh, being an early early supporter, he should have been given more opportunity. Uh, being a person who put his dick out online like all the others did, but didn't really get that EVP spot, didn't really get you know all the other shit that everybody else got. You know, got kind of strung along. Good for him. Good for mm-hmm. him. Finally, you know, finally getting his due. Uh, I I was a big fan of him when he was in NJPW. I thought he was pretty fucking rad. And uh, he continues to be so. And the fact that he one's fantastic. So mm-hmm. and I didn't, I, you know, I, I didn't watch it. I wanted to support my boy, but, you know, I had baby stuff to take care of. So. Oh, no, absolutely. And it, it was an expensive show in North America. So I can't, oh, yeah, I can't no, fault yeah, you for, like, yeah, I'm, not gonna, yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, how, how dare you take food out of your baby? How dare you feed your baby? <laughs> um, but it definitely, it was, it was, it was, it was a damn fine match. And I, I I'm, I kind of disagree. I think it needed to take two and a half years for Hangman Page. Oh, wow. I think I think that if if he had been the first AEW champion, it wouldn't have smelled right to people. Like I think he could have carried the belt, but I think well, it would have been. But there was no vi- issue when everybody else did it. No, but here's the thing, Hangman do think, Page. Do you think this was the right right yes. spot for him to take it? Yes, because he is the first AEW champion to not hold a world title anywhere else. No, I mean, like this full gear show. Do you think this was yes. the moment? The, the yes, because hell, the the whole the whole reason it like it, the idea of full gear came from the fact that Hangman Page was trying to get in gear, full as he put it full gear shape. He wanted to look good in his trunks for the first full gear event, mm-hmm. and so full gear has always kind of been his event. Um, he last year he lost to Kenny Omega, and so it 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 I I think this felt right. I think this felt like the 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 right time for him simply because. I, I think if you you do the if he's the first AEW champion, it's oh my our our friend is a is a champion, so that way we he can feel better oh, about not being executive vice president. Who if, was the first? Had, who, hold on, who was the first champ uh, champion? Russ, Chris Jericho. He wasn't their friend. 
No, I mean he. I mean, was... I mean, I mean, I'm just saying it's almost worse just to give it to Chris Jericho. Like, no, because because Jericho like, hey, man, is. Thanks for joining us. Here's Jericho, Jericho was their Hollywood Hogan. He yeah. was their their guy to bring in people that might not have been Bucks or hell even NJPW fans to c- come try out AEW. Yeah. And so I I will always stand by Jericho was a good call. I think Moxley was the right call to beat Jericho. And hell, I think I. I, I and part of this is because uh, hell Tony Khan has already said he had his first four champions planned out. I like this. I like this lineup. You got Chris Jericho, who when he signed with AEW was kind of the the hook. He was the the hook. Then you had John Moxley, who was the second hook. Then you had Kenny Omega, who let's face it, a lot of AEW fans had wanted to be AEW champion from the go. Like he was, he was that he was supposed to be the franchise player. And now the franchise player has been beaten by the guy. He's been beaten by the cowboy. He's been beaten by the guy who, when they announced AEW, Cody Rhodes had a double or nothing logo on his phone. The Bucks had double or nothing logos on their phones. The first person to ever show us the AEW logo was Hangman Page in that first uh, video. And so, like, there is... It feels like the past two years have been about quietly making Hangman Page the center. And now in the past like six months, people have said he's the center of the company by now. Let's put the title on him. And then you have that six months of, of people going, when, when does he get it? When does he get it? And then he goes on paternity to leave. And I I think they strung us along just enough that 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 moment really hit for me. I don't know. Am I if I'm crazy, jump on in and tell me. But it, it hit Russ, right for me for the hundredth time. Yes, you're crazy, but you're also not wrong. OK, no, fair point. <laughs> Fair point. Me, I, I was there when they announced AEW in Jacksonville. I drove up from Orlando. Yep. I was there and I, I saw the excitement that Hangman had about that being his real, the happiest first day of work for him. Mm-hmm. But as a fan of Hangman Page, for me, two and a half years was too long because okay. I lost interest in AEW as a whole by mid 2019 because I gotcha. kept seeing him getting passed over for everybody else. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, last year when he was going for full gear against Kenny, I think that's what it was. I was like, oh, all right, I'll, I'll give it another try. And then it didn't happen again. And I'm just like, well, nah, no. Yeah. Yeah, I think, it, I mean, listen, <laughs> listen, it doesn't matter. Could have, should have, would have. He should have stayed. He didn't. Now he's here. He's got the championship. Good for him. That's mm-hmm. all this. I, I, I see where Karen's coming from. I, I like, I was kind of thinking down, down that line, but then when Ross explained his his version, um, I agree. I agree with both. Yeah. Um, as somebody who who does who hasn't been keeping up with the mm-hmm. product, uh, and just kind of keeping to uh to mainstream and seeing what comes up, uh, yeah, like, I I don't know if it made uh, it, I I can see people talking about it, but I mm-hmm. thought it'd be more. I thought and, there'll be more. That's why I asked the question, mm-hmm. was this the right spot to do it in? Because I feel like it should have been on a bigger plot, like bigger. What's the mm-hmm. biggest show? What would be the biggest show to, to all out? On? I mean, well, but that's the thing We're because they because they out. but because they only have four pay-per-views a year, like every show can like it's not like WWE where they've got four big shows and then a bunch of filler pay-per-views. Like each of their show, each mm-hmm. of their pay-per-views are supposed to be the big like it blow off to whatever has been going on for the past, like what yeah. it would be like three or four months between pay-per-views. And so I, maybe this would have hit better if it was in Chicago at all out. Maybe it would have hit better if the match had, had kind of had that Kenny Omega, you know, 30 minute classic. Uh, Cause it, it was, it was, I will admit this more of a moment than a match. Like I, I think it, I think the match was, was good. The moment hangman page of hangman page winning was better. Whereas if, they, I, if they'd done this two year buildup, it should mm-hmm. have been on the grand stage. Ah, because that's a that's a yep. two year buildup. If they've been stringing people along for this long, I think mm-hmm. they should have like if they're you know all this time, two years is a long time for mm-hmm. a storyline. Yep. And if you're gonna like blow it up, like you string, 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 and then you start building to that big one, and then bang, but you you need because you're changing. Mm-hmm. Your, your front man is Kenny and you're changing you're, you're changing you're giving the baton off to, to somebody else and if this is the guy that you've been building he's going to be the face I think it should have been bigger I, I yeah. think this should have been like gotten people 
you know, the two year storyline. Yep. That's a that's a long ass storyline. I didn't no, have that- the confidence in them to actually do it, which is why I didn't get full gear. I was Fair. like, yeah. I wanted to watch it and I wanted to watch it happen, but I'm just like, I can't drop that money and be angry at the end mm. of the night. You know what I mean? Yep. Like it, it was just like I didn't want to go to bed angry after it. I was like, no, I can't. I can't. And and it is no, what it is. It, and- it happened though, but no, and, the, and this is this is valid as hell because like I I do like I said it was more of a moment than a match and I think I think a lot of AEW fans wanted the match more than the moment and I I don't think they got that um, and I I don't I'm 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 with you I kind of feel like Paige is kind of stuck in that Naito role right now where they got like I think Naito they got so used to kind of using the chase on him that now that now that he's got the belt I he's he he's got a lot more proving himself to do than I yeah. think he would have if it had been that that big moment that y'all that y'all said. Who who has been his um like adversaries? Who has been like the people that he's been like he him, has good him, stories with? Himself. Like, that's that's been kind of the problem with Hangman Page right now. He doesn't have a feud. His feud has been with his own self confidence. And so what that you, yeah, what so so you you throw a guy up there who hasn't have a who doesn't have a story with nobody else to be mm-hmm. your front man. He, he what was the what was the gauntlet for him to get up there? What stories? Because then when he's a he's a champ now he's got to create now now he's got to like mm-hmm. who who's after him to come after him? Oh well, this guy well him and him had this battle da 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 da. You don't have that. It's an empty trailblazer, you know, like yep. behind it, there's nothing coming with him. He just went up there. So now he has to like, he has to make people, but to, you know, he should have had stories because then yep. the, the trail effect after each wrestler should have been like lined up behind him. He's got to fight this guy off because they went, they had this backstory, this, this, this. Mm-hmm. He, Two he, years he, is a long ass time to run up a, a story and then the longest not time have, besides himself yeah. it was kenny who mm-hmm. he just finally beat yeah. after a year so it's they also need to consider giving him a long run against credible opponents yeah. well like, and the, you can't the, just hot shot the title off onto like daniel bryan all of a sudden like, well but the, need, and, there needs to be mm-hmm. more to it yeah and the, and that is one i it does feel like they might if danielson is his first defense and i'm i'm, I'm hoping he is i really don't want to see a short hangman page run that could help legitimize him, but I am with you that he is kind of behind the eight ball if it's up to his opponents to make him as opposed to his title defenses making him. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it's gonna it's gonna be up to Danielson to really make Hangman Page feel like the champion. Cause we all know we all kind of knew that Kenny Omega was gonna was gonna lose this one. You know, like it was it had been telegraphed for so long. I mean, don't get me wrong, people had their doubts, but it was telegraphed for for just enough that like it feels like they had this two year story and now I have no idea what the next two years is going to like. It's not, it's not, it's not that we're looking at another month of story. It's what's the next two years going to be. Cause apparently that's the arc that they're working on. Uh, and so like, yeah. it's, it's going to, it's, it's going to be a real uphill in, battle. So you, you're, you're going to have him go against Danielson. They have mm-hmm. no story. They, this is just like a, like a fire hurt. pop, pop, yep. pop. But, but that is, that isn't like, there's no, like me you know there's no, no like the, juice the, the, the behind, booking is like, like a kid playing with action figures like oh i'm gonna grab my mm-hmm. my hangman page action figure and just bash him against danielson action figure and like that's the fucking match it's not there's there's gotta be there's gotta be story otherwise mm-hmm. what the hell is going on it's, you know i'll just watch ufc or some shit well it's, it's like, like yeah, actually yeah, actually, yeah, actually, actually stories bro no, I was gonna say yeah. that. actually they have stories so shit <laughs> yeah no and that that is that is the and Fox as we saw stories and as, as we saw with Danielson versus Miro at Full Gear, there is a limit to the Danielson Dream Match tour right now. Like, it didn't seem like people were really popping for Miro versus Danielson the way that I think a lot of people thought when that match was announced. And I think part of it's because there was no story. The story was, it's the tournament final, but it's also like the third tournament final that AEW's done like this year. They have a world title eliminator tournament every three months. Um, and so it, it, it's not like new Japan where each tournament has its own, uh, flavor has its own kind of vibe. Like the new Japan cup is different from the G one, which is different from any other tournament that new Japan's doing. Whereas with AEW, they're like, all right, here's another eight guys that are going to fight for an eliminator tournament. And, and I pay- think, and is page just going to be a vehicle to hand it over to, to Danielson to finally like to, to put them, shove well, them up at the top. Well, but that's the thing is, I don't know if, if this is about 
Danielson's first loss, or I don't know if, if it's entirely possible that MJF is having a very good year. It could be that the inevitable clash could be Page versus MJF, maybe not this year, but by 2024. Um, and that so be, that, would, but that would be infinitely more interesting. It, no, it, it, there would be there would be a story there, especially with the idea that Hangman Page is supposed to be the young upstart of AEW. He's the center of the promotion, yada, yada, yada. Whereas MJF has kind of made a case for himself as as the actual young upstart, as the actual, you know, uh, blue chip prospect. So there 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 is there are some some meaty places, but none of them are really none of them. None of them are, are ready to be eaten yet. Like everything's still on the grill, it feels like. Uh, we've got kind of a filler episode of, of AEW coming up this week. Like it's, it's Danielson versus evil Uno. Like it, it feels very much like a, like a PWG show or something where it's going to be like, thank you for enjoying full gear. We need to figure out what's going on. So here's some matches. Um, like it, I, and this is, uh, this is from someone who liked the paper. I, I enjoyed the pay-per-view, but I'm with you both. I think they are, they are behind the eight ball for the next, two, I think they did fine for the past two years. But now we're apparently starting another two years or another three years or in however long. And, and this... they're, they're about to go into this realm of without the Bucks, without Kenny Omega, the, 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 what was supposed to be the foundation. And mm-hmm. so the, the, who they've been building. I like I like MJF. I think mm-hmm. MJF has been doing a lot. Uh, Darby Allen is solid. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there is upcoming stars, you know, uh, the we'll see there's, yeah there's... but the question is going to be is if those stars are ready to to take that role from the bucks from omega well, from all or, these guys ready or not the problem is they also have shiny complex where they go oh look dude from wwe pluck put him straight up just in a main storyline Ooh, pluck mm-hmm. put him straight in a... and it's like dude like you guys said you were going to be different you said you were there to bring up you know to bring up indie talent you were there to to build something I mean, that ain't what you're there for you're there to dream book your own damn matches that you're that you want to see and it's 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 fine great but at least tell people that's what you're doing mm-hmm. you know at least at least say and then they then they got this whole uh stab you know i'm gonna go i'm gonna piss off a lot of people fuck it go for it uh, then, then they got the whole oh well you know we're gonna do real you know they call themselves sports entertainment we're wrestling and we're gonna have stats and wins and losses matter do they have they what's going on with no. that right no, it, don't don't adjusting get... to what they said mm-hmm. don't <laughs> no, say exactly. it just to, don't say it just to say it well, but yeah. and and this is this is something that I feel like people have been calling from the beginning of AEW that it it is more WWE with or it, it to be fair if you look at the roster it's NXT with a new co- coat of paint. It's somebody, like it's, it's somebody's freaking Twitter Tumblr role play fucking webs uh, whatever it is you know the, where the guys the, make the, up their it's own PWG with an no, NXT budget. It's an E Federation. It's an E Federation. Yes, with real uh, people. I'll say I'll say this. I I wasn't sure what they were gonna like represent coming out to America and starting this whole thing for the past two years. They cater to the smart marks. Yep, and they're killing it. Mm-hmm. I, that, that's fine so i I, I gotta they fill a niche mm-hmm. that that wwe and you know new japan was supposed to come in and kind of run with that but you know they past yep. two years they took it and ran with it i think that's i think they're and so i that, think and that's, their, and that's their and that's their business that's fine and i, I but think that also, I, but also hold okay. on they got they have they have a television network to convince now which is coming up soon and they got to keep pulling numbers because those people don't care how cool Daniel Bryan and uh, Danielson is. Those people don't care how cool Adam, you know, uh, Adam to be, Cole is. To be fair, though, it sounds like some of them do. Like, it's the based on, and again, this is based on the stuff that Tony Khan saying when he was talking to TNT about bringing in Nick Gage, people actually went, hell yeah, bring in Nick Gage. They knew who he was. They wanted to see him, whether it's because of the Vice documentary or because they were watching GCW. And that's fine. I don't care what he says. I'm more worried about the numbers because there's an entire board of directors, not just like... But but the number, and here's the thing, the numbers are fine. Uh, They already got the extension from TNT a couple of years ago. They are still at the point where I, I can't imagine there's any kind of like Franklin and Bash reruns that TNT could put up there that would do better <laughs> numbers than than AEW. Uh, like yeah. I, this is the, and this is one thing I've been, I've been trying to move away from ratings discourse just because it it's getting to the point where there there's a lot uh, there's a lot of like people that want to to pretend that it's still the 90s. They want to pretend that the ratings are the be all and end all of the of how healthy a promotion is on a network. 
But let's be real. WWE's ratings have declined steadily for 10 years, and they keep getting more yes. money from networks because that, it's a live other, product. But they have other business deals now, like Peacock and stuff. Yes, but that doesn't change the fact. But Maybe that doesn't change the fact that if, if AEW is looking into getting into streaming, and let's face it, if I'm Bleacher Report and AEW is basically saying like, hey, we're trying to put together a streaming platform, I, I would definitely try and hop on that based on the way a lot of people have been reacting to Bleacher Report over the past couple of years. Yeah. Um, and so like, I, I, think TNT, I think TNT and TBS and just Turner in general seem pretty damn happy with where AEW is yeah. at. Like, don't get me wrong. I, they're, they're doing, a, it's still a mod, I think it's still a, a pretty modest success, but it's, it's pretty damn good for cable on a, a Wednesday night or hell cable on a Friday night. They're doing damn it's, fine numbers. It's, a, it's enough to keep the lights on. Yeah. And that's all you got to do. That's I, like, I wasn't there like news that they were going to move them to TBS, but yes, dynamite. They are, yeah. So good. What, no, they're they, so good. They're going to keep they, on TNT. No, they're still going to, they're still, they're still moving to TBS. That's why they have the TBS championship. That's uh, yeah, coming moving, out. Moving, moving to TBS actually helps. Uh, yes. Bo- boost ratings as opposed to it's not necessarily because they're doing better it's just because it, it will fit it will fit better in the programming yep. and and gotcha. they will also they'll be bumped less on tbs it sounds like than they will be on tnt yeah um, but, no, they, but i don't say there's no sports but yeah. there's not as many right but what they've added is rampage will still be on tnt uh as well as they will have i think it's supposed to be four tnt specials a year like the way that D- wcw did clash of the champions i want to say the first one is january 8th um, and so they'll still be on TNT, but yeah, they, they are, oh, Ram, I'm sorry, Corey Fitz bring up, uh, Rampage is moving to TBS as well, but yeah, they're moving to TBS, which it, it's going to be a, a better fit. I think Rampage is staying on TNT because they still have the TNT championship. Um, I, I gotta, I'll, I'll do some digging, but yeah, it seems like Turner's pretty happy. And I, again, ratings, ratings are our ratings and I, yeah, unless- I, don't, I, don't, I mean I, and i don't get into the ratings war thing it doesn't matter yeah. there's because frankly first of all the the the, the wwe is never going to be quote unquote defeated uh oh. only only it may commit suicide but it sure itself is not going to be defeated it's just too well, big it's like it's like mcdonald's it's like saying i'm going to open up a, a restaurant and we're going to beat mcdonald's like well but <laughs> a better example is at oh, sorry go ahead no 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 Oh no! Sorry, Ross. No, uh, uh, they can be being. They'll take. They'll just take a couple of generations. Well, how, how many years is a generation? Exactly. Seven, and, uh, seven, seven, seven to seven. ten. Uh-huh. Give but, them like twenty but, years. But the thing is, like, and and and, but that's only going to be their undoing. They can only take themselves down while they're just kind of come up, which they kind of are doing right now. So we'll see what happens. Well, but and and this was my big point is I don't think WWE can be killed at this point. They can be killed yeah. in the way that WCW was killed. But I can watch every episode of WCW right now. Like, if, if I want to, I can find every bit of WCW programming <laughs> they, through they, legal through they, legal means. Yeah, they so, won because they're they're still available and they didn't have to pay a dime for it. In fact, they got paid for it. So technically, mm-hmm. that's a win. Very immortal. Yep. <laughs> All right, I've, I've, I've finished the Google search. It is, Rampage is staying on TNT. Uh, oh. Rampage is staying on TNT. So they will they will be maintaining that presence. They will be having the the specials. But, but um, they can they can they can lose in the way of being a worse product, absolutely. But yes. I think I think overcoming them entirely I, in every way, I don't I don't know. I mean, I think yeah. we'll undo themselves. That's for sure. Like like every big company has. <laughs> that's maybe. Yeah. And again, I, and this is because I, I spend a lot of time watching WWF program from the, from 96. If they can survive 96, I'm pretty sure they can survive anything, especially as long as they're a publicly traded company. I don't know. When I was a kid, if you told me every anchor store from, from the mall would be gone by the time I had my own kid, like that's wild, right? Like Jason, uh, you, you, di- you didn't have shopping town mall. The, the, <laughs> we were on the cutting edge of dead malls in Syracuse, oh. New York. I would have believed it by the time I was 10. No, New um, Jersey, New Jersey has a mall, like every exit. <laughs> okay, yeah, fair. No, up, up in Syracuse, our malls died quick and they died fast. Uh, they, they, they're just Tama, barren. Tama, are you wearing your own t-shirt? Yeah, <laughs> of course he is. Why, why, why would I be wearing somebody else's t-shirt? No, yeah. I don't know, man. I just, I just know <laughs> that you're wearing your own merch. That's tight. That's it. Does the Rock wear his own t-shirt? Hell yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're right. I'm sorry. You're right. I forgot. He's the gold standard. Because mm-hmm. you know I'm the rock and all. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I've heard some people, I don't know who, but I've heard some people call you rock the rock of NJPW. So, you know, I mean, 
<laughs> I don't know who said that, but I think it was Ross. It could stick. No, I didn't say that. Oh. I, 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 st- I strictly call him Dwayne Johnson now. I can't. I don't. I don't use the term The Rock. Um, oh, but, uh, Johnson. All right. Yeah, Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson. But uh, yeah, no. I just call him Dwayne. You know. Well, we've we've <laughs> just call him. You're on first name. I call him Lil D. I, call him <laughs> <Dwayne>. <laughs> I can't say that shit too loud. He lives in driving distance. Oh shit, that's right. That's right. He's got he's you can have drones at your house in the next 30 minutes. Uh, <laughs> well, before before we we get John in too much trouble with uh, future presidential candidate Always. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, uh we should This this is just episode 4 of my ongoing feud with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> It's going to be so funny when you end up being his running mate. Uh, all right. Less is, this has been a, a, a jam-packed episode. We talked Battle in the Valley. We talked Super Juniors. We talked World Tag League. We talked AEW, Full Gear, Ratings, TBS, TNT, all of that kind of stuff. We will obviously be back next week we will be in happy hour this saturday if you want to join in on the happy hours head on over to patreon.com backslash thomas island join up to that islander uh subscriber tier and you can hang out with us every weekend it's i'm sure we're gonna have a ton to talk about uh especially after this episode but we'll be back next week uh i'm i'm gonna throw it i'm gonna throw it to you karen what where can people find you if you want them to find you Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, and YouTube at Hey Karen Sensei. Yep, and you, you're still over a post, right? I will be doing the Tokyo Super Wars review at the end of the month. Hell yeah, there we go. And uh, John, where can people find you if you want them to find you? Uh, anybody but Dwayne the Rock Johnson, come feel free <laughs> to uh, hang out over at Linktree.com/slash John Sebastian <laughs> at John Sebastian on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> And, uh, of course, if you want to donate to our presidential campaign, head over to my Venmo, <laughs> drop me five bucks, see what happens. <laughs> oh, Lord, Rene, I'm well, going to get him in I... trouble with the FEC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, this hashtag sponsored. <laughs> sorry. Oh, boy. And, Tom, where can people find you if you want them to find you? Yeah, I don't, I don't want y'all to find me, except for uh, Little D. You can find me at uh, <laughs> the Good Bad Guy Tomatonga on Instagram, <laughs> Tom underscore on Twitter. Hit me up. Hell yeah. Hit him up, Dwayne. I'm at Ross W. Berman IV on Twitter, Ross Berman IV on Instagram, Ross Berman.bandcamp for all your folk singing needs. And uh, obviously at Thomas Island for all of your Thomas Island needs. Thank you again, folks, for joining us this week. We will be back next week with more to talk about. But until then, please enjoy your week, enjoy wrestling, and just take care of yourselves. Thank you for listening to this week's Thomas Island. Find more great Thomas Island content like the Shotgun series, weekly happy hour Zoom calls with Tama, video versions of the podcast, and much, much more at patreon.com forward slash Thomas Island and visit at Thomas Island on Instagram and Twitter.